So making an instrument versus restoration, are those two very different skill sets or do they kind of go hand in hand? Um, yeah, there's definitely a different different kind of approach that you take with making an instrument compared to um, working on an existing one. Mm -hmm. So with making an instrument, um, you have all of the power of decision making. You get to decide on the wood, um, the model that, um, that you're going to make, which is kind of the, the shape or the design. Um, you get to make the decision about the varnish. Um, every aesthetic decision is, is up to you. With um, repair and restoration, you are letting that original maker guide the way in, in the work. There is a, a very different skill set in terms of problem solving. There's a, a lot of different kinds of problem solving that have to be done for repairs on instruments, kind of basically figuring out how, what the process is going to be for the different steps that you're going to take in fixing an instrument, um, figuring out how, how to configure the clamps if you're gluing new pieces on, you know, trying to figure out how to mimic perfectly this, some original varnish in terms of color, texture, um, that sort of thing. So it's, it's really, um, every repair job or restoration job is sort of unique in its own way. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the goal of, of good restoration is to not bring attention to itself, um, to really try to let that original instrument present wow. in a way that it's, it, it kind of shows itself as its own piece, as its own object, wow. um, and have the restoration not be something that, that is distracting or mm -hmm. detrimental. Um, to the piece. When people bring in their instruments and if there's some major work that has to be done and you're not super familiar with that maker, is that something that you're more hesitant or do you have to like make sure that you're really read up on this mm. on the specific maker before you'll attempt a, a big restoration? Yeah, so I, the background research kind of depends mm -hmm. on um, the intensity of the repair. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the work that I do is um, working with musicians for kind of shorter term, mm -hmm. um, like maintenance or repair jobs. So mostly what I'm trying to do there is actually understand what the needs of the player wow. are. If there is a larger, longer term restoration project, um, you certainly do want to know the, the kind of wood. Um, I mean, it's again, it's like almost always maple or almost always spruce, right. but trying to match the wood as best you can. Um, if you're getting into replacing things like scrolls, of course you would want to reference um, the photos or documentation of other scrolls by this maker to try mm -hmm. to, to copy something as well as you right. can. So you have a lot of people coming in here, I'm sure, all the time. What is, what is your approach when you have a new client coming in? Um, so anytime I'm meeting a client for the first time mm -hmm. and working on their instrument for the first time, um, I really like to sit down with them Ask them why they've come in. Um, sometimes they know if there's a problem or they know specifically what the problem is. Sometimes they just know that their instrument isn't working the way that they want it to and they need me to figure it out. So um, the first step is always just kind of diagnostic, figuring out mm -hmm. um, the work that needs to be done. Um, I, I really like talking with my clients and educating them um, about how their instrument functions, explaining the work that I'm recommending and why. Uh, like you were saying, mm -hmm. you always learn something whenever you go see your luthier. <laughs> um, I really enjoy doing that, and I also think that it's very important for um, musicians to have a, a well-functioning kind of operating understanding of, of what's going on with their, um, with their instrument. So yeah, a lot of um, kind of initial analysis, mm -hmm. um, talking about what they're looking for, talking about what my recommendations are, figuring out from there what we're going to do. So I brought in my instrument to you about a month and a half ago, and there were four scenes that were open that I had no idea about, and it sounds so fantastic now, and the sound is so much cleaner, I didn't even realize. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that it could sound that much better. I just brought it in as part of the routine. But obviously the seams for me seems very drastic that four seams were open. But are there other problems in an instrument that can really contribute to the, the sound kind of lacking? Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, so the other thing that I do, um, like we did when you mm -hmm. came in, 
was um, a full checkup of the instrument. So mm -hmm. just kind of taking taking measurements of um, like bridge position, sound post position, going over every seam to see if mm -hmm. it's open or not, which like you said on yours, <laughs> there were some that were open. Um, <laughs> but as well, just kind of getting, I'd like to get a general sense of what we call the setup of the instrument, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of the, the combination of how the instrument is set up to play. Mm -hmm. um, so that includes things like bridge position, sound post position, also includes things like um, fingerboard projection and string angle. Um, I, I take a look at different factors that affect the playability of the instrument. Um, so all of that kind of is part of my initial assessment. Um, and then of course, seams are usually the easiest and quickest way <laughs> to make a, an instrument sound better. Mm -hmm. um, maybe after changing out old strings. <laughs> um, right. Putting new strings on can um, yeah, certainly liven up an instrument, but maybe you didn't realize was sounding a little dead. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, seams can make a big difference. Um, like you said, it seemed drastic to you. It's actually not, um, not really a concern for me. Seams, uh -huh. um, having a seam open, so is um, when the, the rib starts, starts to separate from the plate. Mm -hmm. um, and that happens um, usually for one of two reasons. One is that um, the instrument has experienced a change in humidity usually summer to winter, winter to summer, that kind of thing. Um, and the wood um, absorbs moisture, expands and it contracts and it moves, um, which you know and many musicians know when they pick up their violin one day right. and it sounds completely different than it yes. did the day before. <laughs> um, and so as the instrument moves, some of, sometimes the wood gets under a little bit of tension and having a seam open or having a seam pop open is a way that the instrument relieves tension, mm -hmm. which is a much better way than having the instrument relieve its tension by cracking. Right. Um, so yeah, seams open, especially older instruments, mm -hmm. um, like the, the one that you play, and gluing them back together is a very, very simple kind of maintenance. It's not even considered repair, it's just considered maintenance. Huh. Um, and yeah, is one of the the, most immediate ways to get the instrument to sound better. Wow, um, so I guess that's much more traumatic for the player, just seeing all the clamps on, on your be. instrument than, yeah. <laughs> than for you guys. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. good to know, yeah. that's good to know. Some people really like seeing their instrument in clamps. I had another okay. client recently who was like, <laughs> thought it was very cool to see all of the yeah. edge clamps, and then some players really don't want to, <laughs> to know what is happening to their instrument inside mm -hmm. the workshop, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really try to listen to what mm -hmm. the musicians are saying when they mm -hmm. come in um, and interpret what they're telling me. Because sometimes it's, it's pretty obvious, but mm -hmm. sometimes it takes a little more conversation or kind of working out to figure mm -hmm. um, what we need to improve, what we need to change.